Libra Sun and Rising. Welcome to a video looking at the eclipses in March and April of 2024 and how they may impact you. I picked your sign first because your sign is the first eclipse, which is happening on March 25th at five degrees of Libra. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading and your natal chart, if you're listening for um, the rising sign or the solar chart for the sun sign is going to vary from individual to individual. Also keep in mind that the eclipses can be felt a month before the actual date. And that's why since I'm recording this at the end of January, it's a good time for me to do this because in February, you may actually experience the effects of this. So at any eclipse, I mean, at any uh, lunar eclipse, I should say specifically, this is like a very powerful full moon. But it, uh, when we talk about eclipses and we talk about solar and lunar eclipses, even though they are compared to new and full moons, they are not the same in the sense that there is a faded quality to them. In other words, it's like something is meant to transpire at that time. And so, you know, typically we'll say when there's a, a, a new moon, set your intentions and things like that. When you have a solar eclipse and you could say lunar eclipse, I, 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 um, when I read uh, stuff about eclipses from other astrologers, there seems to be this idea that it's almost like it, they're not really uh, differentiating between solar and lunar in terms of the effects. It's, and I guess the, the, the logic behind that is that if we were to say, well, a lunar eclipse is going to be this grand finale uh, with something in your life, there still will be something that comes in on the heels of that. So there's going to be a new beginning because that's how life works. Endings beget beginnings. And same with uh, beginnings. You know, you're a Libra, so I'll use the example of marriage because you rule the marriage house. You get married or you move in with someone and you lose your singlehood. Maybe you're still happy that you are married, but there's something that changes or something that ends. So anyway, um, this first uh, eclipse is a lunar eclipse in your sign, five degrees of Libra on March 25th. I believe this is going to be true for that date all over the world, because in my time zone in the United States, it's going to be in the early morning. And the, the place that is farthest away that I've, you know, done personal readings for is like Australia and places, New Zealand and things like that. So I think that's about 16 hours ahead of me. So that would still be on the 25th of March. So anyway, um, this is, for Libra, the first house of the self. Now, the first house of the self is a house that can encompass a lot of things. It can be your physical body. It can be, to me, what I like to do is regard it as a catch-all house related to um, various things in your life. So you're wherever you're at, at the moment. So if something major transpires in your first house, to me, it's like, it could be in any area of life, because as a lot of, you know, each of the houses specializes in some area of life, but because the first house is a new cycle, major transits there suggest to me 
the beginnings or ends of a cycle, and that has a ripple effect for all areas of your life. So with the lunar eclipse, this could be some kind of a great um, revelation that you have, a spiritual download that allows you to let go of some aspect of yourself. Now, um, it's important to note that the sun will be in opposition because of uh, it being like a powerful full moon. So the sun will be at five degrees of Aries and that will be in that opposite house of the seventh house of committed partnerships. So if you are currently in a relationship and let's say the relationship's a little bit shaky, something could happen where you see your partner in a new light. The sun shines a light, you know, it's kind of like when uh, you kind of hear bumps in the night and you have a, a flashlight and you turn it on and look in the, the closet or whatever and you see something that you've always seen, but now you see it in a different life, light. You see the structural weakness of the wall or whatever. And it's like, oh, now I understand why I've been having, hearing these noises or why I've been having these problems. And, um, the, the lunar eclipse can be a time. I, I heard another astrologer talk about this idea of grace from God. And I really resonated with it. And I, I feel like I, actually thought that it had the same phrase came into my head. Uh, and I heard the other person say that, uh, but it's so hard to know because I'm always taking in, in so much information, but the whole idea is that at any full moon, for instance, you can, uh, release something from your life. If you've ever um, gone to a releasing ceremony, as I have, or like a full moon ceremony, like at a spiritual center, sometimes they will have something where you put something, you you write down on a piece of paper, something that you, you want to um, release. Maybe it's a bad habit. Maybe it is, you know, obsessive feelings towards someone. You put it on a piece of paper and then they burn it in a bowl or something like that. You know, sometimes they'll have these kinds of ceremonies where they do all these things. And that's because it's working with the full moon energy. Well, this is a lunar eclipse. And like I said, it's a little bit more than just uh, letting go. It can be this sense of faded endings. And that can actually be helpful in the sense that with a lunar eclipse, it's like you have this assistance, this cosmic assistance to be able to release something from your life. Whereas in a regular full moon, you might have to kind of really, you know, be intentional about it in order and take these steps. But sometimes things can just kind of, um, be done with. And by the way, it can even be like something that you don't, you don't even exert any effort in whatsoever. It's just taken from your life. So if an example would be now, I don't know how realistic this would be because the first house is the body. Uh, and so let's say somebody wanted to lose weight and they felt like they had tried everything under the sun and nothing happened. And maybe the, the lunar eclipse came and all of a sudden the weight starts coming off. And I'm not saying that they just keep, you know, like, like they're necessarily like overeating or doing or not exercising. I'm saying if they were trying to do those things and it still wasn't working or it was very slow and it's like they get into that groove. Um, or maybe it's 
like if somebody wants to relocate, but they just feel like either they they try and they can't sell their house or they just can't emotionally let go, this can allow the person to kind of just uh, let go of it. And I, but I think especially with relationships, since it's forming an opposition to that seventh house. Sometimes this may be that you let go of something within yourself because you know that it is hurting the relationship and her and the dynamic between you and that other person will be better when you let go of this thing. And who knows? I mean, for a Libra person, it wouldn't necessarily be, I'm going to stop being so nasty to my partner because usually Libra people are very kind and considerate. It might be that you need to grow backbone and say no and not feel guilty about it. Maybe you've been uh, trying to please somebody and it's put you at the breaking point because uh, you feel like you can't say, you can't just say no without feeling totally guilty. And you finally just release that and you say, you know what? I don't care. I'm still going to say no. And then on April 8th, there will be a solar eclipse or a powerful new moon at 19 degrees of Aries. And this falls in your seventh house of committed partnership. One, yeah, one last thing that I want to say about the lunar eclipse is that in terms of letting go, it could be letting go of resistance or lack of trust. So if you have these kind of um, barriers up and maybe you have other things going on, you know, like in your chart, for instance, Maybe you have Pluto in the first house and you also have um, Libra rising and you kind of have that Scorpionic thing and or having Venus in, in uh, Scorpio. I mean, <laughs> you know, that would be pretty funny if you had all of that. But yeah, things like that, because that that can uh, indicate somebody who may have trust issues to begin with and maybe that lunar eclipse is like the wall coming down because the rising sign I'm I'm speaking specifically um well not really specifically because even if you have the sun in Libra you might have Venus in Scorpio and that can be a bit or even you know um moon in Scorpio or, or Mars in Scorpio and that can make you very um very hard it make it can make it very hard for you to trust but um what i wanted to say about um this effect of the lunar eclipse is that it can help you to like lower your any kind of wall that you have if you've constructed this emotional wall because you just feel like you've been hurt so much and you're just trying to protect your heart. Um, the lunar eclipse could be like, and it could be kind of daring. It could be like, you know what? I'm not going to fear falling in love in, anymore. Because if you think about it, it could be like an energetic thing too, where it is, you know, not only is it really scary, but it kind of contracts you. It kind of makes you more tense and it makes it hard for you to even um, open up. So this can open you up more. And then that the reason I mentioned that in addition to what I said before is because on April 8th, we're going to have a solar eclipse at 19 degrees of Aries and that will fall in your seventh house of committed partnership. And that could indicate somebody who has a lot of seeds being planted for committed partnership. Why is that so important? Well, obviously Libras and even I'm talking about Libra rising people too, 
can be very relationship oriented, like that is a big deal to you. So, and you, this, by the way, this is also the house that you rule in astrology. So on that level too, you have a connection to the seventh house. So this can be a situation where um, you have more opportunities for that level or that caliber of um, relationship to come into your life. Not saying that you're going to run off to Las Vegas in three weeks um, after the eclipse, but that you may meet, meet someone that actually turns out to be a, um, a life partner, or at least is a partner in one uh, season of your life, you know, just keep it more open and not so, oh my God, my soulmate and this and that, because, um, you know, this is about fate, you know, with eclipses. And I think that, that some people are meant to have relationships with people that are not necessarily going to last the span of their life. I don't, I don't agree that we should knowingly get involved with people that we have problems with but even under the best of circumstances some relationships last and some don't and it is what it is I mean I've been in a relationship for 41 years <laughs> or long, so that's a long time but you know it's it doesn't feel that way it doesn't feel like oh my god 40 41 years because, you know, time flies when you're having fun. But it doesn't matter. You could meet the love of your life when you're 60 years old. You can meet that person when you're 17. It just doesn't, there's no um, rhyme or reason. Well, I think there is. There's a cosmic reason, but you know what I mean. It, there's no, like, uh, set in stone instru instruction manual that's going to tell us how and when we're going to meet that special someone. But this could be a very good time for that. Um, this can also be a period where you are initiating something that has to do with partnership apart from, you know, like romantic things. So, it, it might be that you're going into business with someone and this, like right now, you may have no idea that you're going to do this. This might be something that seems spur of the moment. And then you might, if this actually does pan out, um, you know, please write to me because I would think that would be really cool to validate, verify that or validate that. But, you know, sometimes these things kind of happen on the spur of the moment. And, you know, you're chatting with a girlfriend and then you're, you're talking about these ideas that you have for entrepreneurship. And then she's like, oh, man, I would love to do that with you. And then it's um, a done deal because Libra is a sign that actually tends to want to work with others rather than alone. I can't I wouldn't say that 100 percent. Nothing is 100 percent. But that's just how you tend to roll. Libra is associated with the law and the legal profession. And, you know, it's not just about lawyers. There are paralegals, there are judges, there are, you know, maybe even the, I, I you know, this is a little bit of a stretch. I was going to say the court reporter. Um, but the seventh house is courtroom action. And so I would say anything along those lines, you may be, somebody who just got your law degree or your paralegal certificate. And now you're going to have a lot of opportunities to choose from in your field because of this uh, solar eclipse there. So it, it's really, um, it also, if you are somebody who is already, um, with someone and you're happy with that person, or maybe you are engaged or you're committed to that person, like you're monogamous, but you're not 
living under the same roof. This could be expansion in that area. Um, I think sometimes there's almost like this surprise element with eclipses. Like it just kind of comes into your life. Um, so who knows? Maybe it's someone that you were with before. Actually, this is happening during um, a Mercury retrograde. Mercury is going to be retrograding starting on April Fool's Day until, I don't know if it's the 19th, um, somewhere in the th third week of the month or something like that. So it will be, there will be a Mercury retrograde at the time of that solar eclipse in your relationship sector. So who knows, maybe you hear from somebody just kind of comes out of the woodwork that you haven't heard from for a long time. And then you have to decide, should I proceed with this situation? Because as we know, sometimes it's a person that, you know, is kind of toxic and they, they might be a narcissist. They might come in and out of a person's life, but other times, you know, there are stories of people who were apart for years and then they get together again. And the eclipse can just be that sense of fate. This is the time, you know, when I say fate, I mean that it's destined to be, and especially at this particular juncture of your life. So anyway, Libra, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated and it seems like something that is possible for you. If you would like a private reading, please check out my package deals, such as my deep dive reading which is an hour of natal chart analysis and an hour of transits for the next 12 months. And I have standalone readings, including love readings and career readings. You can find out more information at the link below. I'm at rainandmoonastrology.com. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.